Hello there, and you are there, and I am here. This is Killing Time, and today we're going to go over a little example which we'll be able to use to recap some of the stuff that we've covered in all these updates. Um, and hopefully by now we're seeing the pattern to anyone who you know didn't uh, know beforehand. But on this we'll see... I don't know if I can list all the examples here. Let's try. You'll see, first off, softball questions from podcasters who interview Mr. Forbes and Ms. Lean. In this instance, it's Mr. Forbes uh, on premeditated, premeditated patter, sorry, with 5 0. Um, so, softball questions, we're going to see some of that. But, like I said as well, along with that, what we'll also see is the question asker not paying attention to what's being said, therefore missing a blatant contradiction in terms of what has been, you know, claimed. So there's that aspect as well. The idea, you know, if you were really listening, you would your brain would probably kick in, might make a noise like Roddy did. That beautiful, beautiful noise from Roddy. Um but yeah, that's that's the first point. The other um, being, yeah, the contradiction in terms itself. Remember Schrodinger's argument, uh, one of the updates that we had there, we found a couple of things where it's a contradiction in terms, two things existing at the same time, which really can't. Um, on the, well, well, hmm, kind of getting a bit ahead of myself there. For the first, I'm going to show a clip, um, which is from the the walk about if you could call it that in terms of the area that uh, five o did with scott forbes after a sit down but they were out and about in the area uh, by rowan's dyke path and um this is just after uh scott had said that the search party were all allowed to go home um and wash their clothes which we've done a little short on if you remember so just for reference but here's that clip just now. We take his phone and then they switch off and put it into our bag. The policeman then takes the phone back out, an old knocker. <coughs> he opens the phone up and they, so he, so he destroys the phone in case there's any forensics in it, blood or whatever, right? He destroyed that. Then they take it into an unsecured position and they open up the phone and they destroy all his data. He's saying he sent text messages that could have cleared them, <coughs> but the police destroyed them. There we go. Scott Forbes informs us that um, the phone was taken out of an evidence bag, um, destroyed forensically because of that. We've gone into a little bit of detail in another clip. Um, and when it was an opened in an unsecure area, which then ruined the data on the phone. Now, before I really go into any of the detail of what's actually being claimed here, um, what I'll do is I'll show you another uh, conversation between Scott and Five O, one where they sat down and had a, a little bit of a chat, a little bit longer, where there's a little bit more detail, and see if you can spot the contradiction in terms before I come back. But here's the other clip. What we'll do is, in fact, actually, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, let's break this up into two. Let's, let's break this up into two. Let's go with the first bit of the clip here just now. Approximately, a uh, quarter to six or something, half five. Well, Luke Mitchell texts his, his mum right. and says, If Jody turns up, tell her I'm in New Battle. New Battle Abbey is a college where Mark Kane is, a couple of hundred yards away from Luke's home. But it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It's got big plain fields and forests and all. It's beautiful. People, he's over there with his two pals smoking ash. And he, and he texts his mum. Tell Jody if Jody turns up, tell her I'm over in New Battle. Now that could have proven, but the police then start playing with Luke Mitchell's phone. They take his phone off him. So the old Nokia, do you remember it? Aye. Now that should have been sealed, old eh? Brick. Ah, they should have sealed that very quick. That could uh -huh. have been folded blood, and you know he's allegedly committed this heinous crime. So they take his mobile phone, and then the man then the police officer then takes it back the bag, the gloves, the protection, opens it back up to get Luke's mother's phone number. And then whatever the day with the text messages, you delete all the text messages, apart from the ones that um, 
that they were convenient to their narrative. So there we go. Um, the phone was destroyed forensically. Uh, I love it. it could be full of blood. A phone full of blood. I find it strange because the the, the claim that there was no blood um, at the scene and it was all it all vanished. But this is Scott Forbes' claim. But the phone could be in uh, there could be blood in the phone. And phone full of blood, I think, is such a, a great sentence. It shows the level of understanding for me that Mr. Forbes has when he can come out with a statement so, for want of a better word, dumb. Um, phone full. I, I, does he mean by that that there could be forensics with like blood trace and whatnot on it? Then absolutely. But phone full of blood is just it's whatever. However, just to kind of cover this bit here just now, because there's a lot of times here. Now, Mr. Forbes does say round about quarter to, what was it, half five, quarter to six, um, the looks across in the um, New Battle Abbey College smoking um, weed with his pals. But now we know that to be false. There's a couple of reasons we know that to be false. Obviously, we've, there's witness statements that have we've looked at um, so far on the channel. And in, in fact, actually, now that I come to think about it, Mr. Forbes, is there any reason you would think that you your timings um, for the text message? Well, it's a text message to Luke Mitchell's mum. So the timings for that text message are half five and quarter to six. Do you know, Mr. Forbes, why that might be wrong? Now, Luke Mitchell has never seen going into the scheme. The only sightings of Luke Mitchell, Luke Mitchell was seen sitting on his wall, approximately. I say approximately because people argue with the times. Approximately six o'clock, yeah. right? Just before six o'clock, he's positively ID'd twice sitting on this wall, just before six. But that gave Luke Mitchell. Me from the future, um, well, not your future, the future me who's about to speak about the point that I'm about to make. Yeah, future me. Um, at this, I'm going to go into a, a, a little talk here, but at one point, um, at no point, sorry, did I mention that these times can't make sense because Luke Mitchell's own alibi means that he would be in the house just um, around about the time that these text messages were um, made because he left, apparently, according to his statement, around about 26. So why would he then be texting his mum? None of that makes sense. But anyway, back to present me, who's recording this video before I slapped in this little extra bit. So positively ID'd at the same time that Mr. Forbes claims he was smoking weed with these pals in New Battle Abbey College, which we know didn't happen till later on in the evening, um, well after uh, seven o'clock or half past six, sorry. So this idea, you know, this could have proved um, what was going on if these text messages were, um, you know, available. And as you did hear there as well, within that little bit, Mr. Forbes did say that the police officers were the ones guilty of deleting text messages and then leaving the text messages that suited their narrative, I believe was the words that he used. Um, so the police officers, uh, another skill, another, what do you call it? Another um, step in the corruption, sorry. They deleted text messages that would have proved Luke's innocence. Now, is, is Mr. Forbes saying the, the deleted text messages that proved he would have been in New Battle Library College at half five? That can't be the case, because then why was he positively ID'd by two different people uh, just before six o'clock sitting on the wall, Mr. Forbes? Uh, so this is a case of, again, Mr. Forbes does use a little get out of jail free card by saying he's not very good with times um, and small details, which Again, if you're in a line of work that sees you um, rely on the small details to prove innocence, 
you're in the wrong line of work. Um, if your whole like purpose is to understand how things can work on a small micro scale and how you know times and placement and witnesses and everything else can be so important you need to think about another profession if you can't keep to the same story with the same person two podcasts in a row so let's have a look at the second part of that as well because it's really the one of the the other things I want to cover in all this contradiction. Right, so they've almost like fucking like fitted up and fitted them up really. In such a way. How no. do you know this but Oh the, 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 the mobile records. Mobile records, Mobi- you mobile can tell records. they have been yes, deleted. Mobile records. And obviously the phone could have only been in the custody of the police. Yes, nobody else could yes, have done that. Nobody yes, so else had to have been the police. My understanding is he opened up in a unsafe environment. <laughs> no one told so many coming at one time it blew the, the memory. There we go. I hope my little sidetrack rant kind of um, meant that you they missed, you forgot what the contradiction was before you listened again there, but there you go. There it is. The police officer opened the phone up in an unsecured place and wiped the memory. I mean, apparently, because so much came in at the same time. So they wiped the memory Right, wiped the memory by opening the phone in an unsecured place, but the police officers deleted text messages and left ones that suited their narrative. How can both of those things happen at the same time? So the memory wiped, but still managed to leave text messages that would show innocence and guilt but they deleted the ones that made them look innocent. How did the memory wipe? And one thing as well, which I think a lot of people would miss just by listening to the the, the mess and the contradiction itself, is um, a lot of the you know defence again um, with Luke's innocence is, for instance, the phone and the speaking clock um, there's a lot to say you know well he done that quite regularly okay um, the phone calls around about 5.30 um, or there was two phone calls just after you know half five um, again you know we've got those there uh, the other you know there's other things as well in terms of what they would use as backup for themselves there is one thing we need, though, however, if you want call records of phone and the speaking clock, if we have the records of when phone calls were made from the mobile phone, mobile phone sorry, to the Jones household. And, well, Scott, you said it yourself. What is that? What do we need to be able to understand that that is the case? Mo- mo- mobile records. Mobile records, mo- you mo- can mobile tell records. they have yes. Got it in one, mobile records. For any of the claims to be true about Luke Mitchell phoning the speaking clock, for any of the claims to be true about there being records of phone calls made from any phone or to the mobile, um, indeed, and for any, um, well, credence, anything to this, then we need the mobile records. So. They can't have a wiped memory if we've got the mobile records. Those can't exist. But at the same time, the reasons given for the text messages being deleted, being that it was done through the uh, the police officers, um, and so they could, you know, spin a, a narrative or have, a, have an agenda, then how does that happen? in conjunction with the memory being wiped. Surely those messages would be deleted as well, especially the ones that made them look guilty, if that was the case, if there was anything there that was incriminating. That doesn't make any sense at all. But reality is, it was shown that Luke Mitchell deleted his text messages at half past 12 at night, when he was in the car park that Scott Forbes was standing beside during the video um, that was shown here. 
the reality is it was um, you know spoke about in court that the phone records the phone records um, they showed that the messages were deleted at half past 12 at night when they were waiting to be taken into custody by the police so this spinning of a narrative again it's like the the knife that was in the police's um you know they had it all along uh, same interview as well but again the softball questions and the contradiction in terms the podcaster or the interviewer not listen to what's being said how are the messages deleted if the memory is wiped how do we have the records of phone calls being made and different things that show the use of the mobile phone if that was all wiped how can these things exist at the same time they can't they really can't um but it makes for a, a good conversation doesn't it and it makes for an interest in conspiracy the legit the the legitimacy of the the claim of the police officer taking a phone out without you know you know gloves or protection or whatnot um i can't speak to that at the end of the day there's probably some record of that if that's the case and um, well you would hope so because otherwise how would you know or is that something that's just being made up to kind of stoke the flames um i don't personally believe it to be the case because of everything else that goes with it Again, un understanding technology, I think, helps, but you would think there are certain people, especially the guys asking the questions, um, that would be able to say those two things don't align. But again, do they actually want to notice these things? Or are they more interested in the hot scoop? It is a hot scoop, but it's a hot scoop of fresh shit, really. Um, this one is fantastic. Again, going back to it, the um, contradiction in terms in the, the video that we used in, you know, Schrodinger's argument, um, looking at the, the thing as well, you know, the different things that change in terms of we don't know where the, the couple came from in terms of the ones that met up with John Ferris, but then we know we came, they came off a bus and, uh, and we know what road they came from. These contradictions in terms, things existing at the same time. Can, can, we've got loads of them i can keep going with these but this one uh is just nonsense and we need to go back to the idea that people need to push back on these questions they really do because this is just listen to what's being said at the end of the day uh the he manages in one sentence or one answer sorry to say that uh you know police got rid of the the text messages they know this because of mobile phone records but all the data was wiped how do you miss that that is three points over one answer that do not make sense if you can make sense out of this maybe i'm just not being technologically minded but if you can make sense out of that let me know it's me from the future again i don't know where to put this so i'll just put this bit here uh, at no point in this video as well did I uh, ask the question which some of you guys might know. The wiping of the memory itself. How would that work? What is the unsafe environment where it's opened around? Did he happen to open it in, let's say, the Hydron Collider? And it's gone. Oh, uh, what? It's gone. It's all gone. I could keep this one going, but really want to try and make a, a couple of these a wee bit more palatable and short, especially after the 54 minutes or thereabouts we think we've done um, on the blog about Sandra Lean's charities. Um, so yeah, this one's a, a bit easier in that sense, just cover this. Another couple of things I would say, obviously with Scott Forbes putting look at New Battle Abbey College at half past five. Um, it really then restricts anybody um, believing that he could re be responsible for, you know, the the actual act himself when, you know, it's been put at quarter past five, so to speak. And so people are like, well, 15 minutes. But the reality is the text message that was sent to Luke's mum from Luke came much later. 
Um, and again, the reason that they know that text message is real and did exist, Scott, was because of what? Mo- mo- mobile records. Mobile records, mo- you mo- can mobile tell records. they have been yeah. there. Glad to see you're still awake and still with us. Um, they, so yeah, that... Uh, we know, uh, obviously, that there was a text message to Luke's mum um, to say, you know, look, uh, get Jodie to meet me and my mates at New Battle Abbey College. But as I say, it came once later and it came before he met them. He wasn't smoking weed with them at the time when he sent the text message. Uh, Mr Forbes shows that himself with the walkthrough when he says that he was positively ID'd by two different people. So... <clears throat> It's a bit strange, obviously, that the 5 old didn't pay attention to this, but I don't suppose really it's... I, I just see comments, obviously. Um, I just read one there about people being duped uh, because of the the people that they are, which I, I can't really argue with, to be honest. That was Dan. Dan. Hiya, Dan. Um, but I, I can't really argue with that, to be honest. There has to be... It has to be a simple reason um, in terms of a lot of the... I know people can be easily led and disillusioned, uh, but there are a certain amount of people. George Carlin, I believe, said uh, um, at best, actually, can can we find George? Tell tell the people, spread some wisdom. Look at it this way. Think of how stupid the average person is, and then realize half of them are stupider than that. Harsh, perhaps. Warranted, definitely. Um, so there's, a, as I say, the change in the times of the, the text message itself. Uh, to anybody that's just watching that specific interview, they're going to think, "Wow, that's amazing!" And you know, that's tells two people. Obviously, um, one person tells two people, and then they tell two people. So that's disingenuous. It's not true. And for someone who's supposed to be a very fact-based driven in what he does for a living and a profession, that is bad, bad workmanship. Um, the other thing I would say, well, there's a couple of things actually. I, I do say obviously that the podcasters need to listen a bit more, but I suppose the guys answering the questions can be guilty of that as well. I did love the comment where um, Scott asked 5-0 if he remembered the old Nokia's and 5 replies with, yeah, it's a brick. And they were. Those things were invincible. Uh, if I remember, the Nokia, well, all Nokia's actually. I was going to re- name a model, but I had a couple that were all invincible. But, yeah, he says it's a brick. And then Scott comes back with, yeah, they should have sealed that up quick. Um, yeah, just didn't listen to him either. So it's not just podcasters, I suppose. And I do love, for there's one bit where it's almost... The most genuine from Scott Forbes for me. Um, the, uh, you can tell it, that warms my soul. You can hear my smile here. But during the conversation, when what, during the part when um, the sit down conversation, where he goes into detail about the the uh, officer destroying the forensically, it's the first bit where he says the man. The man took the man took it out the bag. No, it was a police officer. It was a police officer, but it was the man. Reminds you when you were a a, a kid. Your mum used to say, "The man will come and get you." The man, because uh, it's an authoritarian thing, isn't it? The man, the man. Uh, maybe Scott doesn't feel like he was the man um, compared to the police. I would hate to. Well, that's speculation station, eh? Speculation station. I'm sure Scott feels like a man. The yeah, but again, very telling. Um, word, word and language used maybe I'm totally reading into it too much but that's that's where I am so looking at this what do you think guys why are these things not spotted again it's not like you know these things are hard in that as I say in that, that conversation there we have the text messages were deleted but they left the ones that were important to their narrative we know this because of phone records, but the data and memory was wiped because it sounded like a shotgun or something. I don't know, but that was wiped. Um, but 
somehow there was still text messages in it. So, what, it was wiped and there was some text messages left, but then we got ready ones, which made... It was quite handy that there was ones there that actually made him look guilty then, isn't it, Scott? Um, imagine if the memory had just got rid of those, or got rid of all the messages, or got rid of any at all, because then we wouldn't have the phone records for everything else that we have, would we? Uh, so, right away, this claim about destroying memory and destroying data, I am going to say, and I'm going to put a big stamp on it, horseshit. And why I say that is because we wouldn't have, as I say, the records that we also have in terms of the phone calls made to the Jones household from the phone, uh, from uh, Luke's phone to the speaking clock, and the other speaking clock calls, which people say is a validation for him using the speaking clock on the day that Jody Jones was murdered. None of these things can coexist at the same time. You need to pick an argument and stick to it. Um, you can't have proof that these phones were used for certain things if this thing was wiped. So get your heads together, you guys. Come up with a better plan or um, tighten it up a bit uh, to use some <laughs> what's been on this channel before. And let's see if we can't make more sense in future. Really, as I say, can't wait for the newest social sessions, social sessions, to come up with Scott Forbes and see what else is in terms of contradiction. But I've got a lot of a backlog, and this is one of them that I thought was worth uh, talking about. And I wanted to make it short, and now that I look at the length of time, then, the, yeah, uh, challenge failed. But... Thank you very much for listening to this one. Leave your comments down below, guys. Does any of that make sense to you technically? Does any of it make sense at all? And can you think of a great, like an example just like this one, um, two or maybe three points that just don't match up, but somehow, somehow, the person listening to it swallows it, just takes it all in. With that in mind, however, thank you again um, for listening to all the, taking the time to listen to any videos that you have. Stick around, there's plenty there if you guys are new at the channel and want to find out what this is all about. Um, I will actually be having uh, another couple of videos coming up about this, but I am going to have another long form that's finally coming out because I've just not found the energy to sit down and do the more uh, serious side of the recording in terms of, it's just a... a a vibe you have to be in but anyway that should be coming out at some point as well it was good to do something different and record something different in all honesty but keep an eye out for other things that are coming up um in terms of this as well follow us obviously on uh facebook and on x formerly known as twitter in brackets um leave a comment down below let us know what you think of this video any other videos any other contradictions or just go to town but do not be a derrick um thank you again and as we always say enjoy the rest of your day bye